Hey kids, today is Good Friday. It's the day that we remember that Jesus died on the cross. Now you might be wondering, why do we call it Good Friday if it's the day we remember Jesus died? Well, Jesus died for our sins. Even though it was really painful for him and it was a really difficult thing for him to go through, it was for a good reason. He died for our sins, which is awesome. And so we call it Good Friday. Today we're going to talk about what happens on Good Friday. When we left our story yesterday, Jesus had just been arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. So they took Jesus. Now the Sanhedrin were the ones that wanted Jesus arrested. The Sanhedrin was a council made up of people from the temple. It was possibly a mix of Pharisees and Sadducees, but the Sanhedrin had Jesus arrested. So they took him to a man named Annas. Annas was the father-in-law of the current high priest. So they took him to Annas's house. Then Annas sent Jesus on to Caiaphas, to Caiaphas's house. Now the trial that they were putting Jesus through was actually very unfair. Normally they would require trials to be taken place during the day, but this one was under the cover of darkness. So they take Jesus to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. But while Jesus is at Caiaphas's, Peter is following along very secretly and quietly, not letting anybody know who he is. But he's following and he's listening to what's happening to Jesus. And a maiden comes up to Peter and she says, aren't you one of the followers of Jesus? And Peter says, no, no, I, I don't know him. Peter was scared. Jesus, his master, his teacher, the son of God had just been arrested. Peter was scared. So he said, no, he denied Jesus. Do you remember when Jesus was having that special meal with his disciples and he told Peter that he would deny him? How many times do you remember? Three times. Yep. Well, here he has denied him one time. A little bit later, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 26, it tells us that a, a maid comes up to Peter and she says, aren't you one of the ones that follows Jesus? Aren't you, don't you know him? Peter says, no, no, I don't know him. Well, then a little bit later, some other people come up to him and they say, yes, yes, you're with Jesus. You have the same Galilean accent. We can tell you're from the same place as him. You're with him. You're one of his followers. Peter gets angry then. He says, no, I am not one of his followers. And the Bible tells us immediately, right when he says that, he hears the cock-a-doodle-doo of the rooster. And the Bible tells us in verse 75 that Peter went out and wept bitterly. He cried. He wept bitterly. Peter was sorry for what he had done. Well, then after Caiaphas has finished with him, he sends him on to Pilate, the Roman governor. Now, the Sanhedrin didn't have the authority, the power, to put Jesus to death. They weren't allowed to. They had to have Roman permission. So they send Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate. So when Jesus is, is before Pilate, Pilate asks him some questions. Jesus answers some of them. And Pilate isn't really sure what to do with Jesus. He honestly can't find anything that Jesus did wrong. And so Pilate sends Jesus to King Herod. And King Herod doesn't know what to do with him, so he ends up sending him back to Pilate. So here Jesus is before Pilate again. But Pilate still isn't sure what to do with him. Well, there's a crowd watching. And as the night goes on, the crowd gets bigger and bigger and it grows. And so Pilate decides to figure out what the crowd wants to do with Jesus. Now, meanwhile, Pilate's wife has a dream. And she sends a message to Pilate and she says, Pilate, I've had a bad dream. Do not have anything to do with this man, Jesus. Don't have anything to do with him. And so now, more than ever, Pilate really isn't sure what to do. Pilate really wants to just punish Jesus and then release him, let him go. 
But as he asks the crowd what they want, he gives them a choice. At the Passover time, it was the tradition that they could release a prisoner. They could pardon someone and set them free. So Pilate gives the people a choice. He brings out a man named Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer and a thief. And he gives them the option. He says, you can have Barabbas free or you can have Jesus free. And the people say they want Barabbas to be free. And they say they want Jesus to be crucified. Now, crucifixion was a way that the Romans would put prisoners to death. If they had done something really bad, they would put him to death by crucifixion on a cross. And so the people were saying, we want Jesus to be crucified. Well, Pilate washes his hands of Jesus. He says, whatever the people want. So they strip Jesus of his robe and they put a crown of thorns on his head. They were making fun of him because Jesus said that he was the king of the Jews. And so they put a crown of thorns with really big thorns on it, on his head. And they whipped him with a whip and they beat him. Then they forced Jesus to carry his cross through Jerusalem outside of the gates to a place called Golgotha or the place of the skull. Sometimes we call it Calvary. And so Jesus carries his cross all the way out of the city. At one point, Jesus actually gets too weak and tired from the beating that he's gone through. And he can no longer carry the cross. And so the soldiers grab somebody from the crowd called Simon. He was from Cyrene, which is in northern Africa. And Simon carries the cross the rest of the way for Jesus. So they take Jesus out to Golgotha. When they get to Golgotha, outside of the city, they get Jesus' cross, and they get really big spikes, and they nail Jesus to the cross through his hands and his feet so that he'll stay on the cross. He was crucified with two other people, and crucifixions usually gathered a crowd in Roman times. People would come to watch the crucifixion. So there were many people there and a lot of the people there were happy to see Jesus on the cross. But there were some people that were very sad to see Jesus on the cross. There were some followers of Jesus that were there. Some of the women that followed Jesus and some of the disciples. John was there with them. Mary, Jesus's mother, was there. As Jesus is hanging on the cross, fighting for his life, he's dying there on the cross. He calls down to John, who's there, and he asks John to look after his mother, Mary, for him. Then the Bible tells us about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, 3 o'clock is usually, when you're in school, 3 o'clock is usually about the time that you're getting out of school, close to it. So, is it dark at three o'clock? No, it's not dark at three o'clock. It's bright out, right? But the Bible tells us on this day, around three o'clock, it got really dark. The sky clouded over, it started rumbling, and Jesus said his final words. He said, it is finished. He also asked Jesus to forgive the ones that had crucified him because he said they don't know what they're doing. And he said, it is finished. Now he was talking about that our sin has been paid for. That we no longer have to go to the temple and sacrifice an animal. We can ask Jesus anytime, anywhere for forgiveness of our sins because Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. He was God's son. The perfect sacrifice died for our sins. So, after he says, it is finished, his head bows, and he dies. Now, Pilate had a sign put on Jesus' cross, and it said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. He had it written in three different languages. He had it written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek, so that 
people from all those different places could understand what the sign meant. Now, some of the, some of the scribes and some of the Sanhe members of the Sanhedrin went to Pilate and they said, you need to change that sign. You need to have it say, he said he was the king of the Jews. But Pilate says, what I have written, I have written. He's saying, it's going to stay like that. I, I wrote it like that for a reason, and it's going to stay like that. Well, when Jesus dies, at the moment he dies, the Bible says the earth shakes like an earthquake. The Bible even says that rocks split open. The Bible also tells us that saints, people that had followed God and were buried in the city of Jerusalem, they rose up and they walked into the city of Jerusalem and they appeared to people. People were raised from the dead at the moment that Jesus died. Now, it got dark probably to remind us that Jesus took on our sin. He hadn't sinned, but he took on our sin. So the moment he dies, it gets really dark. Something else happens though. Back in the temple in Jerusalem, there was a big, thick veil, a curtain that separated the Holy of Holies area. This was a place that the, the high priest was only allowed to go to at certain times. It was the place where God's presence was. And so there was a thick veil, a curtain, separating that. The moment that Jesus died, that curtain ripped, it tore in two from top to bottom. Now, it wasn't a kind of curtain that a person could rip apart. It was too thick. But it was kind of like God was tearing it in two from top to bottom. This curtain was really, really tall. And God ripped it in two. He was saying, now everyone can come into the presence of God because Jesus has made a way because he died for our sins. So even though it's really sad to think about Jesus dying on the cross, and it's okay to be sad about it for a little bit because Jesus suffered and died for us. But we also need to remember that we can be glad about this if we've asked Jesus to forgive us of our sins. Because when he died on this cross, he was thinking about you, and he was thinking about me, and he was thinking about everybody. He was taking on our sins so that they could be forgiven if we choose to ask for forgiveness and turn away from our sin. So Jesus died on the cross. A little bit later, they come by to check to see if the men have died. And they find out that Jesus has already died and they pierced his side and it caused him to, to bleed out his side and that was fulfilling some prophecy from the Old Testament that said that he would be pierced in his side. Well then a man called Joseph of Arimathea comes to Pilate and he asks if he can have Jesus's body and put it in a tomb. He had a new tomb that he wanted to give to Jesus. So Joseph of Arimathea prepares Jesus's body for burial. They take it off the cross. They wrap his body in white linen cloth and another man also helps him, a man named Nicodemus. Oh, we talked about him just a couple of weeks ago. So Joseph and Nicodemus prepare Jesus' body, and they put Jesus' body in a tomb. The tomb would have been probably kind of like a cave, and they put Jesus' body in there, and they put a big stone and rolled it in front of the door to seal the tomb. That was what they usually did. But then members of the Sanhedrin went to Pilate and they said, we want to put soldiers outside of the tomb to guard the tomb so that nobody comes to the tomb, steals Jesus' body, and then says that he rose again like he said he would. So can we put soldiers outside the tomb? So Pilate allows them to put some soldiers on guard outside of the tomb. Now this was Friday evening. Saturday... All during the day, they had soldiers, different soldiers coming by and guarding the tomb all day so that nobody would take Jesus' body. But everything is quiet Saturday. Jesus' disciples are scared. They're hidden away in an upper room. 
They're scared that they're going to be next. And they're shocked. They're in utter shock and disbelief. They had just seen Jesus, the Son of God, die on the cross. So all is quiet on Saturday. We'll be back on Sunday morning to find out what happens. I hope you have a great day.